Hey guys, how are you? Everyone knows the American Sin City, Las Vegas. But who would have thought that the largest gambling center in the world in terms of revenue is in Asia? Let's take a look at what it looks like today. Hey guys, and in this video we're going to take a look at Macau and see what it looks like today. So let's go ahead and start the video. Macau is located on China's southern coast, 60 kilometers west of Hong Kong. The territory consists of the Macau Peninsula and two islands, Taipa and Cologne, as well as Katai, which is a major area developed in reclaimed land between the two islands. Let's take a look at the history of this place. Originally, Macau was a small Chinese village and it did not develop as a major settlement until the Portuguese arrived in the 16th century. You still see heavy European influence in many ways that you generally don't find anywhere else in Asia like Portuguese street signs. After the Second World War, refugees from mainland China were fleeing from the Chinese Civil War and this enabled Macau's economy to grow as the colony expanded its clothing and textiles manufacturing industry, developed tourism and legalized gambling in 1962. Macau was transferred back to China in 1999 after 442 years of Portuguese rule. As a special administrative region, Macau is going to maintain separate governing and economic systems from that of mainland China until 2049. And you can see that today, all travelers coming to Macau from Hong Kong and mainland China must pass border control just like everybody else. The population of Macau today is 667,000 people. It is one of the most densely populated regions in the world with a population density of 21,000 people per square kilometer. In Monaco, for instance, it's 18,000 per square kilometer. What about the economy? In the 20th century, the gaming industry here operated under a government-licensed monopoly. But in 2002, the government ended the gambling monopoly and it allowed bidding for casino licenses to attract foreign investors. And this triggered a period of rapid economic growth. Today, Macau's gross gaming revenue is roughly three times that of Las Vegas. For example, in 2018, it was 37 billion for Macau and only 12 billion for Vegas. At present, Macau is the only place to gamble in all of China. In 2016, 31 million tourists visited the place, which is nearly 48 times the population of local residents. In 2019, Macau's GDP per capita reached a staggering $81,000. You might think that everybody's wealthy. Well, not really, because there is a high level of income disparity. Looking at these apartment blocks, you wouldn't say these people are rich, would you? A lot of rundown looking neighborhoods once you step outside of the tourist areas. The predominant language here is Cantonese Chinese. How do you get to Macau? It has its own international airport, but most tourists come here through neighboring Hong Kong, from which you can get here by ferry or by bus, and it takes about an hour, but the bus is cheaper. In 2018, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge was opened, 51 kilometers long, of which 6.7 kilometers is an underwater tunnel. This unique structure is clearly visible from the plane during landing or during a trip in a cable car in Lantau Island in Hong Kong. This project was immediately labeled as the White Elephant in the Pearl River because there is not much traffic here and it will never cover its costs. Public transportation is well developed, buses run frequently and their routes cover the entire city. You pay the fare when you enter the bus. Cars drive on the left side, unlike What's in China or Portugal. Taxis are affordable, the only downside is you have to pay in cash. And the local currency is the pataka. But most places accept Hong Kong dollars as well. Let's talk about gambling. There are 38 casinos today, and most tourists that come here today hoping to hit the jackpot are from mainland China. 
The casinos stay busy all the time and they're doing everything to attract tourists to spend money on their premises. Let's take a look at some of them. The Venetian. It's the largest casino in the world. It's a luxury hotel and casino resort owned by the American Las Vegas Sands Company. The hotel uses Venice, Italy as its design inspiration and features architectural replicas of various Venetian landmarks. You can go right in, in a gondola listening to Venetian songs while going through the canals. Lisboa Casino. It's one of the most popular and oldest ones. Here you can see the exhibits from the private collection of one of the founders of the city's gambling industry and a local celebrity, Stanley Ho. This guy has been given different nicknames like Godfather and King of Gambling because he held the government granted gambling monopoly for 75 years. Today he owns 19 casinos in Macau. He's 98 years old and he has 17 children. Now besides Macau, he does business all over Asia and you'd be surprised, he even has a casino in North Korea. In 2006, the fabulous Win Macau Casino was opened. There's a musical fountain show in front of the casino every 15 minutes in the evening. Like I said, the casinos are going out of the way to attract customers. Now if that wasn't enough to impress you, they're offering a cable car for free. The ride takes about 10 minutes and it's totally worth it. Especially at night because you'll be traveling over the fountain show. Guess what? This ride will take you directly to the casino entrance. There are many other casinos in the city, like City of Dreams Casino with its water circus show, the Parisian Casino with its Eiffel Tower, and many, many others. What is the main difference between Macau and Las Vegas? People go to Las Vegas to have fun and gambling is optional. Now people in Macau go mostly to gamble and the fun part is optional. The people who come to Macau generally have a lot of money and the minimums are in many instances double or triple of that which you find in Vegas. Baccarat and Sigbo are the games of choice here as they seem to take up the vast majority of the casino space. What's there to do in Macau besides the casinos? Sightseeing, of course. The Senate Square or the Senado Square is part of Macau's UNESCO Historic Center. It's generally packed with tourists who come here to admire the famous wave-like mosaic tiled pavement and the colonial facades of the surrounding buildings. Hugging the square, you'll find the Senate building, a former Portuguese government house. Now it's the city administration. This building is the Holy House of Mercy. It's a medical clinic built in 1569, but now it's a museum and other colonial era buildings. Head deeper and the pathway will take you into commercial chaos, full of shops and street food. If you survive that, you'll be rewarded with a series of churches, including San Domingo's church built in 1587 and overseen by three Spanish Dominican priests and the famous ruins of St. Paul's. This famous facade is all that remains of a 17th century church which was devastated by a fire in 1835. In its heyday, St. Paul's was considered the Vatican of the Far East. Behind the facade is the Cathedral of the Museum of Religious Art. To the right of St. Paul's you'll find Montefort or Fortaleza de Monche, literal meaning is big fortress. It's a 16th century fort, a historical military center of Macau. From here you get beautiful views of the city and there are plenty of cannons everywhere. For some strange reason they didn't want me to film here. 
Nowadays, it can be sometimes a challenge to find the old Macau under the ever-growing shadow of casinos and hotels that have come to define modern Macau. However, there are still a lot of streets that maintain a real connection to the past. Rua de Felicidade. In Portuguese, it means street of happiness. Chetin is passed as the heart of the city's red light district. It's now one of the most popular streets for discovering local delicacies and souvenirs. Rua dos Hermanarios is another narrow pedestrian street in Portuguese style. Here you'll find traditional Chinese shops, souvenir shops, and small craft beer bars. Hello. <laughs> Dom Pedro Theater, built in 1860, one of the first Western style theaters in East Asia. The Macau government headquarters. It's the official office of the chief executive. Built in 1849, the two-story pink facade structure is one of the historic properties preserving Portuguese influence in Macau. The modern residential part is full of high-rise buildings standing side by side. Many steep streets just like in Portugal and balconies with all the bars that look like bird cages. <laughs> Ni hao! You can visit Macau TV Tower, especially if you love adrenaline. There are two attractions here, Skywalk and Sky Jumper. I'm familiar with these guys from my trip to Sochi. Did you uh, say this is the world's highest? Yes, at oh. the moment. 223 wow. meters. Yes. 223 meters. Uh, 233 meters. 33 meters. Exciting. Tower climb, yeah. oh. You can even be the very highest point of the tower. Yes, we offer you tower climb. And this wow. is the only place where you can do it's this. It's not cheap. A bungee jump Stop. will cost you $450. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, man. You're welcome. I hope you get some customers. One of the cool places in Macau is Fisherman's Wharf. This complex includes over 70 stores and restaurants built in the different styles of the seaports around the world. Lisbon, New Orleans, Cape Town, and Amsterdam. They even have a replica of Colosseum. A beautiful place to come in the evening. Now few tourists come to the southern part of Macau. Too bad. In my view, it's one of the best parts. Cologne Village. This island used to be a haven for pirates who sought shelter in many of its coves. Provides a wonderful break from the crowded and busy Macau Peninsula. Cologne also has two of Macau's best beaches. Serenity, no crowds of tourists, and no street vendors. You can get here by taxi or by bus. You can relax on the beach, enjoy the views of the mountains and cliffs, admire the luxury villas standing on the shore. Where are you from? Macau. Oh, you're local? Yeah, you're local. Really? Yeah, we are local. Oh, yeah. cool, cool. You like living in Macau? Yeah, yes, I. What do you like about Macau? Uh, food, the culture. The culture? Yes. Mm, also, people. The local people, yeah. You got great friends? Mm, yes, friends. <laughs> Have you guys never been here before? This is my first time to here. To here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. My first time. Now, where in Macau do you live? Uh, in, in the old Macau? Yeah, in the old oh, Macau. In the old Macau. Yeah, old Macau. This is yeah. where I'm staying at the hotel. So. Doing a little vlogging, you know. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. This local guy seen me with a camera, invited us to take a look at his garage and show us his collection of cars. Thank you. I'm doing this little video about is, Macau. Uh, Macau. Is that your house? Oh. oh, beautiful. Looks great. Well, who knows? Maybe he's one of those lucky gamblers. <laughs> What's your favorite car? <laughs> uh. The red one? The red one. Oh, because it's a convertible. Unfortunately, not everybody <laughs> speaks good English here, so we couldn't really have a conversation. And I like the Mercedes too. Yeah, that's how we live in Macau. You live in large. Many beautiful temples in the area, both Buddhist and Christian. Narrow streets will lead you to the chapel of San Francis Xavier, built in 1928. 
you know, this kind of graffiti, I don't have a problem with. Everyone wants to take a photo. At sunset, this place is impressive. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Are you guys from Macau? Yeah, Macau. What's yeah, your name? Jenny. I'm Rosal. Nice to meet you. Nice Thank to meet you. you too. Tell me some of the things you like about living in Macau. What do you uh, like the, about living in Macau? The, the food. People. The people. Yeah. What's your favorite food? Uh, Portuguese food. Portuguese? Portuguese? Yeah. What dish? Uh, curry chicken. Yeah. Curry chicken, okay. Yeah. And uh, like a um, mint. mint. Okay, we'll have to try that. Uh, Lidlau. You go to Lidlau restaurant in Mago. Okay, I'll yeah. find that. Okay. I said for you. Oh, yeah. you'll send it to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah. We'll stay in touch now. <laughs> Say hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> Ni hao. <laughs> hello, I'm Jenny. Hello, I'm Rosa. Welcome to Macau. Welcome to Macau. This is a live place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's take a walk. Are there enough forests and parks in Macau? Yes, the entire southern part of the island is nothing but mountains, parks, beaches, and the jungle. For animal lovers, there's also a zoo where you can admire giant pandas and red pandas. Food in Macau is based on both Cantonese and Portuguese cuisines. This is a Portuguese pub. They invited me to step inside and take a look at the winery. Just so you know, if you decide to try some local food, many dishes on the menu are bigger than you expect them to be. And are meant for a company of four to six people. So instead of one serving, you get this. When it comes to street food, egg tarts are popular. So of all the things that people recommend trying in Macau, this one's called egg tart. It's a dessert, uh, basically have some eggs in it and some other cool stuff. It's tasty, you know. Make sure you try that. Street shops are offering to taste a local delicacy called bakva. This is jerky, salty, sweet, sometimes spicy meat, usually pork. A pork chop bun is one of the most popular and famous snacks in Macau. It has been described as the Mechanese version of a hamburger. So let's sum it up. Macau's on its way to become the city with the highest GDP per capita in the world. So what's the secret? First of all, it's monopoly on the gambling business in China because one and a half billion Chinese people as your customers is no joke. In addition, international tourists are attracted by the cultural heritage of Portugal. Macau does not have any serious issues with Beijing. In December 2019, Xi Jinping visited Macau in honor of the 20th anniversary of a session. They have big plans for Macau. They want to open a stock exchange here and turn the city into a financial center, as well as give it more land on the neighboring island. Many consider this as a gift for good behavior, because there haven't been any anti-government protests like in neighboring Hong Kong. So what do you think about Macau? Would you like to visit? Let me know in the comments. Welcome to Macau. Welcome.